Welcome to this video lecture. This is Mark Scythian, FAA licensed aerospace technician, airframe power plant and avionics certified. The date today is June 2nd, 2017. The title of this lecture is GE90-115B Turbo Fan Engine Power and Efficiency. Here's a picture of the General Electric GE90-115B gas turbo fan engine. This is the world's largest and most powerful and efficient high bypass turbo fan jet engine. Photo courtesy of airliners.net. Photo copyright credited and pending. One thing to focus on is the fan bypass ratio. This is the ratio between the airflow that flows around the core through the fan duct versus the airflow that flows into the core through the compressor to be compressed ignited with the fuel and then absorbed by the turbines to drive the compressor and fan. First we must access the GE9115B gas turbofan jet engine specifications. The maximum static thrust output 115,000 pounds. Maximum mass airflow 3,000 pounds per second. Mass airflow. Fan bypass ratio 9 to 1. Fan diameter three and a quarter meters or 128 inches. Overall compressor pressure ratio 27 to 1. The polytropic compressor efficiency 91%, which is much higher than other competitive gas turbo fan compressor cores operating around 75 to 80%. Uh, the fan efficiency a whopping 93% versus the typical 80 to 85% fan propeller efficiency. Uh, fuel is kerosene jet fuel or JP4. Maximum fuel delivery for the GE90-115B 10.32 uh, pounds per second of kerosene jet fuel. Maximum fan RPM 3, uh, 2,355 RPM. Uh, for maximum static thrust operations on the ground we'll use an outside air temperature of 60 degrees Fahrenheit. When we're doing efficiency analysis for cruise flight, uh, when this is on the Boeing 777-200LR, we use a cruise flight speed of 562 miles per hour, uh, a cruise flight altitude and temperature of 36,089 feet at minus 60 degrees below zero Fahrenheit, uh, cruise flight thrust at zero acceleration at 562 constant speed, 19,000 pounds of thrust, and cruise flight thrust specific fuel consumption or TSFC is 0.573 pounds kerosene jet fuel consumption per one pound of thrust over one hour. The thermodynamic rules and limitations, one BTU per second of heat output, in this case in the form of burning fuel, will equal 1056 watts of power. 746 watts is equal to 1 horsepower, which is also equal to 550 foot-pounds per second of mechanical power. Kerosene jet fuel, or JP4, has an energy density of 18,730 BTU per pound. The fuel density of kerosene jet fuel, or JP4, is 6.75 pounds per 1 U.S. gallon. The lecture goals are identified, 13 total. Number one, calculate the BTU per second thermal energy input at maximum power. Maximum power equates 10.32 pounds per second of kerosene jet fuel, or JP4. Multiply that times the energy density of JP4, which is 18,730 BTU per pound. So when doing so, the maximum BTU per second thermal energy input at maximum power will equal 193,293.6 BTU per second. Number two, calculate watts thermal power input at maximum power. One BTU per second is equal to 1,056 watts of power. We calculated there's 193,293.6 BTU per second when at maximum power. When multiplied out, that equates 204 
million, 118,041.6 watts. Thermal power input, one at maximum power. Number three, calculate horsepower in the form of burning fuel input at maximum power. One horsepower is equal to 746 watts. We calculated the maximum power input in the form of burning fuel when at maximum throttle is 204,118,041.6 watts. One divided into 746, that equates 273,616.7 horsepower input in the form of burning fuel when at maximum power. Calculate the average jet velocity in feet per second at maximum power output of bo at both the core and fan nozzles. To solve this, we would simply use the static thrust formula, the F sub G listed right here. That was That is equal to the jet velocity average out of the core and the exhaust. Uh, I'm sorry, the core and fan exhaust nozzles times the total mass airflow through both the fan duct and the core in pounds per second, the V2 in feet per second divided by the gravitational acceleration at Earth, 32.2 feet per second squared. We're using US units, so they have to remain identical in US units unless you do this calculation in the metric scale or measurement unit system. But like terms must stay in like terms. So when we solve for V2 jet velocity, we algebraically rearrange this formula so that the static thrust max times the gravitational acceleration is multiplied and then divided into the pounds per second mass airflow. So when we do so, we calculate 1,234.3 feet per second average jet velocity out of both the core and fan exhaust nozzles when at maximum power. Calculate the adiabatic compressor discharge airflow temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. Adiabatic compressor discharge air temperature is the minimum theoretical air temperature of the compressed air exiting the compressor discharge nozzle and then entering the diffuser and combustors. As the compression of air increases, so too does its temperature. In thermodynamics, uh, adiabatic refers to the closed system heat that exists in a thermal system not adding or taking away heat from that system. So it's a very theoretical closed system output value representing the minimum amount of heat of air compression that will ensue from a gas turbine engine's compressor or a turbocharger. So we use this formula here for which the temperature values must be in absolute temperature Rankine scale which is equal to degrees Fahrenheit air temperature plus 460. So we're going to use the outside air temperature of 6 degrees Fahrenheit plus 460, so that would be 520 degrees Rankine. We have a compressor efficiency of 91%, so 0 .91, uh, 0.91 in decimal form. We have a pressure ratio of 27 to 1, so 27. So when we uh, identify all these uh, variables in absolute terms, they have uh, this formula to use, the T out is the compressor discharge air temperature in degrees Rankine's, which we don't know. So all we do is take the compressor pressure ratio 27, take it to the 0.63, uh, sorry, 27 to the 0.263 power, subtract one, and then multiply that times the intake air temperature in degrees Rankine. Take this quantity, divide it by the compressor efficiency, and then take this entire quantity, add it to the outside temperature in degrees Rankine, absolute temperature, so the discharge air temperature, or I'm sorry, the compressor discharge air temperature will equal 1,308.2 degrees Rankine. Subtract 460 from that, so we have a minimum output compressor discharge air temperature of 848.2 degrees Fahrenheit on this given engine. So the adiabatic temperature rise of the compressed air from ingestion, compression, and discharge into the diffuser and combustors will reach a minimum theoretical discharge air temperature of approximately 850 degrees Fahrenheit. Calculate the horsepower to power the N1, I'm sorry, the N2 and N1 fan compressor spools, both the high and low speed spools. Um, the thermodynamic constants, uh, 0.24 BTU is equal to the heat required to raise one pound of mass air by one degree Fahrenheit. 
at standard temperature and pressure conditions, one pound of mass air is approximately 13.5 cubic feet. Mass airflow into the compressor only is the next component, MS sub comp, which is equal to the total mass airflow in pounds per second divided into the fan bypass ratio. So in this case, that would be the 3,000 pounds divided by 9, which should represent the pounds per second mass airflow that enters the compressor only. And then we have the uh, temperature rise of the compressed air. So that's the compressor discharge air temperature in Fahrenheit minus the outside temperature in Fahrenheit. Uh, 778, the number of foot-pounds per second to 1 BT per second. 550, the number of foot-pounds per second to 1 horsepower. So if we want to know the compressor horsepower, both spools, we take 0.24, multiply it times the total airflow divided into 9, the fan bypass ratio, times the difference between the compressor discharge air temperature and the outside temperature in Fahrenheit, multiplied times 778, then this quantity divided into 550. So when we tabulate all the variables and we enter them in, we calculate 0.24 times uh, 3,000 divided by 9 is 333.3 pounds per second mass airflow entering the compressor only. So we take 0.24 times 333.3 foot, uh, pounds per second mass airflow times the temperature rise of the compressor discharge air temperature minus the outside temperature, so 788.2 degrees Fahrenheit times 778, this quantity divided by 550. So the minimum compressor, uh, the minimum horsepower required at maximum power to drive the compressor spools to keep the engine lit when at maximum power will equal 89,186.6 horsepower. Number seven, calculate the horsepower to accelerate fan bypass airflow at maximum power. The power in watts to accelerate any type of mass is represented by P sub ACC, which is equal to M times V squared, quantity then divided into two times T. The M represents the mass in kilograms of the airflow, so kilograms per second. The V represents the final velocity or the jet velocity in meters per second. And the T is the time in seconds of the acceleration. So we would take the eight ninths of the total mass airflow flowing through the fan duct because the bypass ratio is nine to one. Multiply that times 3,000 pounds per second mass airflow total. So the fan duct will ingest 2,666.7 pounds per second mass airflow when at maximum power. We convert that to kilograms, 12, I'm sorry, 1,212.1 kilograms of mass airflow through the fan duct. And the final uh, exhaust nozzle jet velocity at the fan nozzle is equal to 1,000. 234.3 feet per second divided by 3.28, the number of feet to a meter, so 376.3 meters per second is the final speed, or the jet velocity at the fan nozzle, fan exhaust nozzle, and then it's a one second acceleration time. So when we multiply the quantity of 376.3 meters per second quantity squared times 1,212.1 kilograms per second mass airflow through the fan duct only, then we divide that into, uh, into two times one second acceleration time. It will require 85,817,704.2 watts of power to accelerate the fan bypass airflow when at, max pow when at maximum power. This is pertinent to the GE90-115B. The fan is included as part of the N1 low-speed compressor turbine spool one-ninth of the total mass airflow entering the intake duct of the engine will pass through the fan into the compressor while eight-ninths of the total mass airflow will pass through the fan and bypass around the compressor as cold air constricting through the fan duct and will exit at a higher speed. The power the fan needs to overcome the compression of cold bypass air through the current constricting fan duct exiting the fan nozzle at higher fan nozzle discharge jet velocity is included with the final velocity V component of the formula. So whatever excess power is needed to overcome the constriction to increase the fan exhaust nozzle jet velocity is part of the final velocity component or V.
that power is tabulated as a speed increase from a change in speed to a final speed, uh, initial speed to a final speed, so that is considered a power increase. That is actually included within the formulation. So when we uh, divide this watts to accelerate the mass airflow, which is technically part of the low speed compressor spool's power, but we have to separate it into additional bypass airflow acceleration around the core. So this is a separate calculation. So we, we divide this value here into 746. It's 115,037.1 horsepower. But then we also have to include the fan efficiency losses. We lose about 7% at the fan. So 1 over 0.93 times the horsepower to accelerate the fan bypass airflow. It's actually 123,695.7 horsepower. So it'll take 123, uh, I'm sorry, 123,695.7 horsepower is needed to accelerate 2,666.7 pounds per second of mass airflow to a final fan exhaust nozzle core, uh, to a final fan exhaust nozzle cold air jet velocity of 1,234.3 feet per second, including fan efficiency losses. The horsepower required to accelerate the 333.3 pounds per second mass airflow to 1,234.3 feet per second exiting the core exhaust nozzle has already been computed along with the compressor horsepower in the previous calculation. I'm going to end uh, part one here and see you at part two.